It is believed that they have taken animals like ships, cows, uh, because they reproduce. They want to teach, they want to learn how cows have calves, how cows make milk, how the goats do that, how the dog, has, you know, some animals have eggs, some animals are mammals. So it's, uh, it's true, it's very interesting. Another part, uh, in Africa, I am wounded in the book, so I say I because the name of the character is my name. <laughs> So here, uh, my friend is hurt as a boy scout. Mm -hmm. We climb cliffs, we are taking badges. You know, when you're a boy scout, you have to do certain things to get badges. So we do <laughs> climbing. Mm -hmm. He falls down. And when he falls down, he falls on like a small forest and the tree goes through his body. So I went down on my knees and prayed with all my heart. I talk about to Mary, to my guardian angel, to Jesus himself and to God the Almighty. I beg them for all for support, for mercy and healing for Varia. Varia is my friend, is the Boy Scout. What could I do to be more useful? I ask in my prayers. Did I do the right thing in this emergency? Suddenly a bright and large beam of light came down from above. It illuminated a large area around me, including Varia's body, the cliff and the forest around us. I immediately thought that it was a rescue helicopter, but there was no sound. The ray of light was warm and getting brighter. It continued circling, probing, and covering the entire stretch of the forest, moving up and down the trail. I tried to look up, but its intensity was too powerful. Hello, Gerard, it seems that you need my help tonight. I recognized that voice immediately. It was a doxus. I was still on my knees. There he was, standing beside Varia's body. Next, yeah, in Africa I am, in the book, wounded. In Africa, the true story in Congo, you know, in the 60s, the book is in the 60s, the, the army was very, very poor, very corrupt. They had the, the hire, they pay them, they give them drugs, they give them alcohol. People they call the Simba. Simba in uh, you know Simba in African language is a lion. So these people were very horrible. They drink, they kill foreigners. They go, they kill people working in embassies, consulates, they kill travelers. 
So they rely on the army to save these people before the symbols are coming. People are so scared that when they hear symbols are coming, the army go. They put the rifle <laughs> down and they run away. So that's what they used to do. So the, the, who can help them? The local army? No, they didn't do a good job. So they rely on French army. So many, many times. Still now, same thing. You can read. No, you can read the newspaper. French army is in Africa a lot. Helping. But you can only do certain things. So here I'm wounded. Do not pull out the arrow, because these people use bow and arrows. They use rifle, they use anything. I heard myself scream. It was pitch black all around me. It hurts so much. Leave it inside. I am thirsty. Please give me some water. George will be angry because I got wounded. I was stupid not to have moved fast enough. Now everyone will be killed because of me. Why am I blind? I can't hear chirping noises. Where are they coming from? Why can't I move? My shoulders are stuck to the ground. I feel hands touching me. Who is it? I can't see anything and these chirping noises are driving me crazy. Why do I feel so relaxed? I do not feel any pain, but I'm so thirsty. Please give me water. If I am already dead, why are they touching me? Why? I heard more voices talking softly. So now it gives a cover, the middle band, it has little pictures of aliens that, drawn by his daughter, the middle part. Yeah, my daughter did that. I <laughs> asked her to do something. To the... My daughter, she likes aliens. <laughs> and she likes E.T. very much. <laughs> French are very good for these kind of movies, the, the alien movie. Uh, because in France, I told you we have a lot of in the fifties people say they are crazy. People from Mars are coming, they are killing us. Which is never happened. That does not exist. But later on and so many people say we saw and intelligent policemen, people who work at night, firemen, uh, pilots. Oh yes, a lot of pilots, so you will afford. So they put the research to be done by the French gendarmes, which is the army, not the police. The police is a different group of people. The gendarmes are police, but from the army, and they can do the investigation. I had a friend of mine, we were in the army together. He became a gendarme, so they have a lot of fun. And later on, what is true, what is not true? Difficult. <laughs> but uh, experts, scientists, the gendarmes are working with experts. We have a very, very big laboratory in France with a lot of scientists. They will say, no, that story doesn't make any sense. And that story can... Pictures, right? Some pictures we have found to be fake. So, uh, sometimes on the internet, if you look on the internet, in Germany, a lot of UFOs. And then you look, you say, wow, it looks like, but the shape of the UFO is very strange. So you know <laughs> something is wrong. You know? <laughs> so. At the end, In Africa, I meet a priest, very old, and there is a relation with the doxus and the priest. There is a relation uh, with alien and the priest. Maybe. We are not sure. So, I go to England at the end here. I talked to my father who works in hotels and was very angry because I went to Africa to do that with my life. 
thought that it's a waste of time, dangerous and idiotic. <laughs> but parents would be like that. When I went to the army, my father was very really angry. I don't know why. Father should be proud. He thought, you know, you're wasting your time, you're going to school, you should keep studying. I want to see things, I want to do things. I want to learn army, I want to learn shooting, and jumping from planes. Mm -hmm. My father think, thought it's very stupid. But later on, he calmed down. <laughs> what do you think, son? My dad asked. Were these miracles or not? You are right, dad. <coughs> father Lapino, the priest I met in Africa, is right too. Miracles do take place, and we should let the Lord do this work and accept the way he's doing it. Africa opened my eyes. It was a beneficial experience for me, even though I almost lost my life there. I'm glad that I had met Father Lapino, and I enjoyed his wisdom. What name did you say? Question my dad. Father Lapino. Hmm. That's quite a coincidence, said my father, touching his chin. Why is that, Dad? When I was a young kid, he answered, I was an altar boy at St. Sauveur Basilica here in town, a very big church in my hometown. One day, a new priest took over the parish. He was very old, perhaps in his late 70s, maybe early 80s. The congregation loved him. He was still very strong and healthy for his age. His name was Father Lapino. He preached powerful sermons on Sundays. He was never late for service. He helped the poor. And he taught us catechism every Thursday evening. He was not a local man and told us that he had come from a place far away. We never understood what he meant by that. Do you remember the name of the place, Dad? A strange single word, like Toby, Topi, Toki, something like that. Toki, Dad? Yes, that's it. It was Toki. I remember, my dad said. Actually, we tried to look it up in the dictionary, but could not find the word Toki. So we just forgot about it. He worked at Saint Sauveur Basilica for many years. Then, one day, he just left the church, and we never saw him again. But you know, son, he cannot be the same man. Why is that, Dad? I was 10 years of age when I first knew him, and he was already 70 or 80 years old. That would make him almost 125 years old now. We look at each other silently and nodded. <laughs> I saw very French, good French movies uh, with American actors. And I'm trying to remember the name because it was a very close encounter of the third kind. <laughs> Did you ever see that? Close encounters of the third kind were the mothership they try to call the mothership and give some mothership comes down. Out of the mothership comes all these people from 60 years ago. You know, planes disappear during the war, cows, horses, men, women, still in good, in good shape. And didn't age, didn't get older. So, this is a movie. Movies is fiction. You know. But there is some truth. I think it's research. Uh, I believe in that. Why not? If they... It could be... I also believe in that. They see that the world is going down. You know, bad situation. Of course, we have wars and everything. And it's maybe up there they have wars too. You know, they have some planets fighting other planets. But, you know, the way we behave with the environment and everything, maybe they do some research to help. 
and bring it back to their place. It is said that some aliens live already with mongers, are with us, with some special power. I haven't met any. <laughs> I thought maybe I meet a beautiful lady, which is an alien lady with a lot of power. Every one of us is an alien. <laughs> and I would, uh, I would ask this lady to make me younger again, <laughs> if she has special power. I don't know. Actually, in the book, you do say that um, Gerard does ask what what the alien, yeah. the, the question that you ask. Yeah. And the answer given in the book is that they travel around because they are interested in research and they want to know about all the creatures and how they work. And so this is why they took the character Gerard yeah. Yeah. into the spaceship yeah. to examine his body, mm. to know how his body works. Mm. So that was his answer already. Mm. <laughs> and contrary to some TV programs, you know, when they take people on board mm. and they do some research, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes they put things into the body so they can check it later. Okay. But nothing with me. Okay. I didn't discuss that in the book. So the book your plot seems to, as far as I understand, has the idea that you are specially picked yep. by <laughs> and then followed through at different stages when you were in danger, they came to help mm. and so on. So it's it's all the way following your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um because, you know, I, w I will not tell you the story of my life here because it will, we will be here tonight, to, <laughs> tomorrow, and after tomorrow, part of my week will be here, you know, but I, I have missed, escaped death a lot of time, mm. but not like movies death, you know, not like, oh, the guy is lucky. He could have died. Wow, that was dangerous. But I really escaped death. And uh, I was supposed to die many times. But I didn't. So I thought, well, if I say that, you know, I sound very pretentious. You know, the people will say, the guy is nuts. You know, this, is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. But in fact, it's not. But I put it under a different form. You know. You get examined, and uh, I didn't get things into me, screws, uh, things like that. And some people say they did. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, you know, like uh, people who say they have been abducted, abducted by the aliens. They went onto the spacecraft, and the people on board did this to them, this to them. And then they come back, they are very strange, they become very crazy. Some commit suicide, some, I didn't do that. I don't particularly believe that, you know? Mm. I don't. Mm. I don't particularly believe that. I think some people really have seen UFOs, you know? And many people did. Close to my hometown, you know, something happened to me at 10 years old with UFOs, so I put it there which I've seen. But, you know, like, it's me. I've seen it, I believe it. People believe and don't believe. That's a matter to me. It doesn't affect me at all. But, close to my hometown, I discussed that there. I, there was a farm, and, uh, of course, big field. Uh, in 1956, strange winter happened. Uh, you know, we never, 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 never have snow in my hometown and the, uh, the French Riviera. Maybe it gets cold a little bit on the strange, but never any snow. That year, a lot of snow. And the city didn't know what to do. We didn't have anything for the snow. <laughs> Even people to clean it, we didn't know how to do it. So snow came, right? And snow is in the field. 
all around, all around. UFO came in the daylight. UFO, you know, you believe they come at night when everybody is sleeping. But here, two o'clock in the afternoon, people can see. They call the gendarme, they call the police. Police came and saw that thing. And nobody moved. Nobody, you know, they are very worried. And two minutes later, take off. Perfect cycle, circle, snow had melted. But later, the farmer could not grow anything there. No potatoes, no lettuce, no carrots. It would stay black. And it was black. And he couldn't do anything. All the rest of the field he took. He could do anything, plant trees, flowers, but never there. So, true. Effie, do you have some? Do you want to ask him? Um, uh, I was just curious about um, the size of the, the spaceship, the UFO that you mentioned this name. Yeah, m most of them, not very large can be with two people. But the mothership are very, very big. Because the mothership, they travel for years. But the one you saw is just a small one, right? The small one. Same size like in the book. Medium size. Is it made of metal? I mean, I really didn't touch it. I don't <laughs> <laughs> so, it has to be special metal, you know why? Mm -hmm. It has to be something really special. And nobody knows what it's made of because it flies so high, it flies across planet from planet to planet. And the speed, it's very incredible. See, we land, when it takes off, you don't see it anymore. Nothing comes out from it. Like, uh, in my book, a doctor comes out of it. <laughs> but uh, some people have seen aliens, you know, little men. Like and the one in ET. Like ET, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but in the movie ET, it's also like uh, ET came because there was an accident with the UFO, you know. Really? You have to fix it and come <laughs> and get it. So. But many, many centuries ago already in France, they say they come and take people. They come and take animals. And uh, people made drawing, painters made drawing, you know. So for observation. So the UFO can be medium size, large size, or as I see a mothership I never seen. Nobody has seen, only in the movie Close Encounter of the Third Kind, they show you the mothership, which is unbelievable. <laughs> so big, you know. So. Mm. Again, you, what do you say? Susan, did you? Oh, yeah, like, uh, I've Googled your book before, and, mm. and I believe that you have conducted an interview with the radio station in Hong Kong. Yes. True. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, I'm wondering why after your interaction with the Hong Kong people, right, what do you think is the major difference of the belief towards aliens like among the Hong Kongers or like from the Canada and France, like those people, like what are their belief like do they have I do not know about the belief of the Hong Kong people because I didn't uh, they didn't communicate. I can t I could say something about that. Yes, so you're quite right. So Gerard did do a program with the UFO Society in Hong Kong and they were very welcoming and very nice. And then later they invited him to dinner at um I think it was at City U. And they're a very interesting group of young people. And they're obviously doing um very careful research. And so they do have a team, you know, somebody who reports something, and then they investigate it. And they're obviously being very thorough and careful. And so, so far, they have no confirmed sightings. They have a lot of things that they have seen, but their conclusion was there was no confirmed sighting. And so one of them said to Gerard, 
We're so jealous. <laughs> Why did they choose you? Why did they visit you? Why did they take you into the sh into the spaceship? Why didn't they take me? <laughs> and that's a question everybody asks. You know, I I cannot answer that, can I? <laughs> <laughs> that's fine.